So in this video, I'm going to show you how to find products with massive potential, but with very little competition. So there's a big problem with product research softwares, and that's the fact that 99% of people use them in the incorrect way. In this video, I'm going to show you the correct way to use them so you can still find those products with massive potential, those proven products, but have very little competition. So without any further ado, let's jump into it. So today I'm going to take you through a mini product research course. This is what we're going to cover today in this video. Number one is the shift of mindset and approach to product research. This is about the consumer's mindset. This is crucially important. When you understand this, it will completely change how you think about the product selection process. Number two, I'm going to cover the key criteria to product selection. So alongside taking into account the mindset of what your consumer is doing. There's tick boxes for products when you select them. And I'm going to show you what those tick boxes are, the criteria are. So next time you pick a product, you can run it past this free checklist that I have and it will identify whether you have a good product on your hands or not. Number three is how to gauge the longevity of a product. It's no good finding a product that might make you a bit of money for a month, two months, three months. We want to build a business here that's going to be sustainable. We want to build a brand that will provide an income for the foreseeable. Number four, the problem with product research softwares, which I touched on briefly in the introduction. I'll go into a bit more detail on that later on. And I'm also going to be showing you as well my product research strategy from start to finish. So let's start with number one, which is the shift of mindset and approach. We need to, we need, need, need. This is a 100% deal breaker. You have to consider what your customer is actually doing at the point in which they see your ad creative. They are not credit card in hand looking to buy anything. If you're advertising on any social media platform, then the majority of people on there, 99% of people on there plus, are going to be on there to probably kill some time, scroll through their newsfeed, watch some funny videos, watch some cute videos of puppies or babies, and watch some interesting videos, watch shocking videos, talk to their friends, whatever it may be. Nobody is on that platform to actually buy anything. What this means is that if you're selling a boring, bland product, and creative, so your product and creative goes hand in hand, and there's quite a strong argument to be made that your creative is more important than your product. In fact, I would actually agree with that. If you have a really boring product, but a super engaging and awesome creative, that is much more likely to succeed than if you have a brilliant, awesome product nobody's ever seen before, but a super boring creative. The creative is what sells the product. So if you're selling boring bland products and you have boring bland creatives, it's obviously going to be really difficult to create an engaging creative if you've got a boring product. Then you will just get ignored. Your product must be unique, it must be exciting, and it must be super relevant to the audience as well. If your product and creative doesn't capture the attention of the person's newsfeed, that it pops up on, they'll scroll past it and they'll forget it just a few seconds later. If you have a product that is unique, exciting, that they've never seen before, and when they see it, they think, bloody hell, that product has been made for me, then they're much more likely to engage with it. They're much more likely to notice it. And one of the ways we can do this is being specific with our target audience and actually niching down within the niche that you've already selected, okay? So let me give you an example. Most people, a lot of people watching this video, one of the biggest niches out there is dog owners, targeting dog owners. It's a brilliant, brilliant niche. But nowadays, you can increase your chances of success, in my opinion at least, um, by niching down within the niche. So instead of targeting dog owners, which is tens of millions of people, what we want to do is niche down within that. And we could target, as an example, American German Shepherd owners. That's a lot more specific and still, by the way, a big enough market to make a lot of money. So let me give you an example of, of why you should be doing this. We'll take this product here, which is for all intensive purposes, it's a fine product. There's going to be a lot of German Shepherds that own it, but trying to advertise this to a market, to the pet niche, it's going to be really difficult to drum up any excitement about this because this is a pet lead they could probably buy in your local supermarket, in your local pet shop. It's going to be really difficult, isn't it, to get people excited enough to, to impulse buy and purchase it right there, especially an American German Shepherd owner. If we take this product here, which of these two products do you think has a higher chance of success of getting attention? And attention is what you should be aiming for. In some ways, 
when you're having your creative made, and even when you're selecting your products, in some ways it's better to think, will this get attention rather than will this actually sell? Because attention equals sales. So which of these two products do you think will get most attention from an American German Shepherd owner? It's going to be the t-shirt, is t-shirt, isn't it? Because it connects with your audience in two different ways. Whereas the dog lead connects in one way, but it's not a very strong connection, is it? So for example, whether you're English, American, it doesn't matter what planet you're on, that's a dog leash. Whereas this t-shirt, that is so specifically speaking to somebody in two specific ways. And that's with the dog breed that they own and the country that they're from. Americans, of course, are really patriotic too. So that's a bonus. So what we're going to cover, we've covered the shift of the mindset and approach to product research. Next is the key criteria to product selection. Number one, when you select a product, this is like the most important thing. And if you do this, then you know for sure you have a winning dropshipping product on your hands. And that is if you have evidence of dropshipping sales. So I'm just going to skip through and show you this. This is what you're looking for essentially. In every product research software, you'll be able to find evidence of dropshipping sales like this. Essentially, you want to find the actual live creative on the social media platform. I will show you as well the actual product research strategy in a bit more detail towards the end of the video. But essentially what you're looking for is the actual creative on TikTok, the creative on Facebook, the creative on whatever platform it is you're doing your research on, because there's no better feedback or evidence of a winning product than customers actually saying they've bought the product. So look at some of these two, please ready to order. Now mine came yesterday, just got mine minutes ago. I love it over the move. My recent purchase, absolutely love mine, bought myself one of these. If you saw these sorts of comments on an ad for a dropshipping product, that's undisputable evidence that people are buying that dropshipping product. And then you know that you've got a winner on your hands. Number two, this above point, which I just mentioned covers everything, but just in case you decide to sell a brand new product that has no dropshipping history, so you can't find any competition, here are some important criteria. So this is what I call my proven products research checklist. Everybody can get themselves a copy of this 100% free. If you click the top link in the description down below, it will take you to my free course and community where you can get a free download link for this. It's a brilliant resource, a place to kind of record any products that you've found. You can import them into this. So this is just an example products, this turbo fan, and you have all these different pieces of criteria on the left hand side, which help you identify the good and bad points of a product. So as you can imagine, when you've been doing your product research and you've got say half a dozen products on here and you've filled out this checklist and traffic light system makes it super easy to see which products are the best. And also when seasons change, products do come in and out of season. So over time, when you build up a catalog of products that you've found, it's handy so you don't forget about any. You can just come back and see what you found, say six months ago, three months ago. So really, really good resource. Everybody can get it for free. Top link in the description down below. So on the left-hand side here, we've got all these different pieces of criteria that in an ideal world, you're looking for your product to match with. And it is as simple as, is this product hard to find in stores? Yes, it is. Green is good. Red is bad. If you're not quite sure, what the points mean. If you hover over them, they're explained in a bit more detail. Some of the key kind of like most important ones, in my opinion, $30 margin, that's pretty much a deal breaker for me nowadays. Um, I advertise um, mostly on Facebook and CPMs have gone up since I started in 2016. So in an ideal world, I'm looking for a product that I can sell for at least $30 more than what I'm paying for it. This was a super important one too. Ideal customers, 50 plus and female, like since I started in 2016, they've been the strongest buyers ever since. So if I can find a product that matches those two things, then big, big plus. The other thing you are looking for as well is um, hard to find in stores is a super important one too. So that kind of takes us back to that dog lead. Like you can find a dog lead in pretty much any pet shop. So why would you buy it from a website where it's going to take a week to get delivered and it's probably a bit more expensive too. So if you can find a product that isn't readily available, so when people see it, they don't instantly think, oh, I've seen that before. I'll just get that next time I'm doing my shopping or next time I'm doing my errands and I'm running about. You want them to see a product and think, oh, I've never seen that before. I don't know where else to get it. These guys must be the only people selling it. Therefore, I'm going to buy it from them. Okay, so... Where we're up to so far, we've gone over mindset and taken into consideration 
that the consumer is not in a buying mind frame, which means we have to sell a product that speaks to them so specifically that they get excited about it. We've covered the key criteria to product selection. Next, how to gauge the longevity of a product. This is super, super quick and easy with Google Trends, 100% free resource everybody should be using and have booked marked. Example, United Kingdom past five years heated clothing. If you were to think Mm, it's December. I'm going to start selling some heated clothing. You could come into here and you could look at history for the past five years. It also goes back to 2004 too. So you could look in here and say, actually, mm, heated clothing starts coming down sort of first, second week of December starts coming out of trend. So do I want to rush to put a store together and try and make the most of the last two weeks before it pretty much hits rock bottom? Well, that's probably a bit fair, unfair, actually. It's sort of like end of Jan, it hit, end of Jan, February, it hits rock bottom. So you could think, do I want to try and milk this for the next two or three weeks? Or shall I add it to my research checklist and I'll come back to it when it starts going the other way? So in, say, like September, October next year. So Google Trends, really, really good free resource. We've covered the longevity of a product. Next, we have the problem with product research software. So massive, massive problem. Um, they contradict themselves, don't they? Because well, let me just show you this image then. Oops, I've already kind of shown you the punchline there, but what's wrong with this image? So this was taken from a popular, one of the bigger product research softwares. So just take a minute. In fact, put a comment down below if you're still watching the video this far. I really do appreciate the support. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, of course, if you enjoy the content. But let me know what's wrong with this image and post it in the comment section before. And it's the fact that they invite more competition to the products. So it says there, approved by over 200,000 e-commerce enthusiasts. There's 200,000 people using this particular software. So by the time that product has popped up on that software and you've seen it, there's going to be a significant amount of people, tens of thousands, probably close to hundreds of thousands of other dropshippers that have seen that very same product. It's too late. It's already too late for that particular product. Um, so they kind of contradict themselves in that way. So what do we do instead? So if product research softwares are no good, then what do we do instead? Well, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you can still use them, but we use them to validate an idea instead to validate that we have a proof of concept. Then we pick something that does the exact same thing, but is different, is unique, that nobody has ever seen before. Let me give you an example. I've been dropshipping since 2016. It was probably 2018, 19. It's definitely pre-COVID. So 28, 19, these back stretchers went mega, mega viral. Lots of people made six, if not seven figures off them. There was definitely one or two companies that made seven figures off these products. Then we had a company called Acemend, which a couple of years ago sold the exact same concept. It's a back stretcher. It's exactly, it does the exact same thing, but it's a different design. It's made out of different materials. It looks different, but it's a product that still serves the same market because it's a proven market with a proven demand but it's a product nobody has ever seen before, they were able to drum up a lot of attention and attention equals sales. Okay, so finally, my product research strategy start to finish. This in itself requires hours of dedicated training. So rather than put it all into one YouTube video, what I've done is I've added it to my 100% free, no catch, Everybody can get access to this instantly, completely no catch, 100% um, free. It is my dropshipping course and community that I recently created. So you will find a link in the description down below. Head over to that. In fact, I should be able to show you what it looks like. So this is the landing page for the free community. Um, down in here, it will show you everything you get access to. So it's my flagship five pillar formula course. You get weekly Q&A calls with myself. You get a one to one roadmap call with myself if you want to redeem that. And you also get a bonus of 10 handpicked ready to go products all for zero dollars, completely no catch. Everything I've just mentioned, you get 100% free and instant access to. It's a brand new community. We only have 40 members. So if you want to be part of that and get access to everything I just mentioned, um, head over there now, click that join group button, answer the questions. I am mindful of the answers I get because I want to keep the group as quality as possible with completely no spam, just a genuine community of people all in the same boat, looking to support and help each other succeed with dropshipping. Hopefully see you on the inside. Let's go.